Well, good evening, everybody. Keith here. Hoping everybody's having a good day, enjoying life, living life, loving life. It's been a while since I've been on. But I wanted to get on today and talk about identification of the listing agreements. And it's going to be a while. I got a lot of information. And if you hang out for a minute here, I'm going to do some uh, sharing here real quick. I've got to try to do this from now on because... They seem to be shadow banning me. Of course, my participation has dropped as well, so we'll see. But in the meantime, I'm going to take a couple minutes to share the link. See if we can get some more viewers. Because... Uh, the shadow banning is no fun for sure. And I already have this sense that I say things that people just don't listen to. But that doesn't lessen the desire to speak it. I see it as part of my duty, so. In doing so, I'm going to do the best to get it out there. So. And like I said, this is, we're probably going to be here for an hour, hour and a half, maybe even two hours doing this video. Because it's going to entail a lot. It's going to entail a lot more than what I'm going to put into it. Because it already entails a lot of things that I've already put out. It's just a kind of a, a refining of some of the information that leads to this particular video here today, just like all other previous videos kind of subsequently kept leading to more and more videos I'm gonna keep doing them and this is just more information confirming all the information that I put out from my research prior hopefully I'm just gonna be able to keep doing these videos and show people how to connect these dots in, reg in regards to how we identify each other and as I've said many times I will do my best to use the scripture as my holy writs. And so before we're identified, we're known. Jeremiah 1.5, one of my favorite verses. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And the end of that verse speaks about being ordained and sanctified as a prophet unto the nations. So before comes any name it's a prophet because it's not about listening to the messenger it's about listening to the message and the prophet that we're supposed to be mentioning is our father which art in heaven his word in these identifications we're we're giving instructions of a different father previous to us in a different classification and that's what the identification is. Every identification fulfills the requirements of a minimum listing agreement. The minimum requirements, excuse me, the, fulfills the minimum requirements of a listing agreement. Now in that simple comment, there's a lot of different things that come into effect in regards to how we come about making such a simple comment and it's a it's a con, uh, it's a, a confluence of like I said earlier all the research I've done already and the things that I've posed and I've always said it's a it's an insurance scheme and we all know insurance has to do with risk management 
And in regards to risk management, you have different types of things that can be damaged. In their courts, it's always in rem, the thing. And so if you damage a car, then they're, t they're actually talking about the car and the value of the car and who's liable for it. Two different aspects of the same confluence of informations. And that's what we're going to do here today is show you the various different aspects and they're all related to that identification, every last one of them. The birth registration starts out as an issue of the, of the uh, Department of Defense. And that Department of Defense, in military fashion, is responsible for natural culture, the natural history, um, the national treasures, and all of those things that come from the natural people. Not the national people, the natural people. Those national elements are again, Jeremiah 1.5, sanctified and ordained as a prophet unto the nations, is, is um, telling us there are things supplemental to the national things. And so, the language is very important, and putting it all together comes to um, Isaiah 54, 17, where we're not supposed to let any tongue prosper against us. We're supposed to rise up in any judgment because we're not supposed to be judging each other as man. We're supposed to be judging each other as, as the living soul. Je uh, Genesis 2, 7, man became a living soul. So when we were actually born, not birth, but born, we were discharged as man, and when we took that first, first breath of life and became that very act of God in every moment from that time on, we became that living soul. So as a living soul, there is paperwork that is created in regards to a man, but instead of being discharged on record as man, It was listed militarily to the Department of Defense to later eventually be entered into the National Archives through statistical data collected by the Bureau of Vital Statistics in a contract with the Department of Commerce and the Social Security Administration at the state level. That state level um, contract through that birth registration on the national level, Department of Defense, creates a presumption of a resident based on a last name. The last name is a national name, entered into national records already, previously. Okay, and again, Scripture tells us we are not to pay tribute to an earthly father, for there is but one Father which art in heaven. So when that birth registration is, is, is uh, created, it creates a successor to one that was already entered into the record as a national. Whether it was actually intended um, by that actual living soul or not in that manner that's what effectively happens it's all done through the identification if you don't have that birth registration and that that identification entered into the system through delivery immediate delivery into transportation immediate delivery into transportation they took mom's delivery of a living soul, a man that would take its first breath of life and become a living soul. And that was converted. That's the very point of conversion in the actual existence of ourselves. The conver same conversion happened to our father, father and mother and descendants before us, or ascendants before us. Everything that they use in regards to that last name, everything, is for commercial purposes in a military construct. This is the Admiralty Maritime Conjunction. 
and it's a contract. It took two and contracted them together, making one term, Admiralty Maritime. You won't go into one of these courts and only find maritime. If you're going into a court and it's only maritime, then that's contract, that's arbitration, you won't find yourself in public. So every time you go into one of these courts in, in public, and I don't care whether that flag has a gold fringe or not, it is an act of war. Period. And it's done under a false accusation, under a false identification, under a false listing agreement. So let's get into it. Real estate listing agreement. This is what I first pulled up when I looked up listing agreement. I just searched listing agreement, I believe. What is a listing agreement? And the first one popped up is what is a listing agreement? Now we can go down here. We, what does a listing agreement cost? Doesn't cost anything. Rather, it outlines how much you'll compensate your real estate agent for the sale of the property. What kind of clause can be added to a listing agreement? A listing agreement will often include a med uh, mediation and dispute clause. So like I said, it's a contract. This type of clause states that if you and your real estate agent run into a dispute during the home selling process, and this states that if you and your person you're dealing with in any contract run into a dispute during the process of the contract you meet with an impartial third party in private not in a public venue okay to work it out any clauses that are included must be agreed upon before signing the contract what is the primary purpose of a listing agreement a listing agreement is an employment contract between a property owner and the person they're dealing with as an acquisitioner. They're, they're, if you're if you've got a, you've got property and you're involved in any kind of contract, it's going to be an employment contract, and the employment contract is you to employ your assets into the military system through a commercial contract of the property owner and the one acquisitioning the property. It allows the broker, the acquisitioner, to act as a listing agent and find a buyer for the property on the seller's terms. What is a listing agreement most commonly used for? Exclusive right to sell a listing. Your identification is an exclusive right to sell listing agreement by minimum information. It says you have the right to sell. Exclusive right to sell. Now, if you have the exclusive right to sell, why do you need identification? Isn't all man created equal and therefore has the exclusive right to sell? That would depend upon the term sell. Right to sell. The right to sell is something in the future. Do you have any right to anything in the future? I don't think so. That's a certain deceptive statement or leading statement as they would call it. An exclusive right to sell listing is the most commonly used contract. With this type of listing agreement, one broker is appointed to sell the seller's aid, uh, appointed the sole seller's agent and has exclusive authorization to represent the property, the thing. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. The next one's very simple, and it's Council of the District of Columbia. This is a Code of District of Columbia, Title 42, Real Property, 
Chapter 17, Real Estate Broker's Duties. Real property converted to real estate. Real property converted to real estate under 26 USC 1031, known as 1031 exchanges in the financial uh, circuits, is an exchange of real property held for productive use or investment. <coughs> it's an exchange of real property held for productive use or investment. Now it's real estate as a real estate investment trust. Everything is trust. It's all dependent upon contracts for real property. And in that construct, it's converted to a real estate investment trust. It is actually the construction of a trust, known as constructive trust. Okay? And it says, 42-1705, written listing contract required. A written listing contract is required in the district for the sale of all real property. It does not say real estate. So when we first pulled it up, and it first showed real estate under Rocket Mortgage. It says if you're looking to sell your home, like I said, it's 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 uniform throughout all jurisdictions, just like the UCC says. So instead of if you're looking to sell your home, it's looking if if you're looking to sell something, you might be excited to get excited to get started and anxious to complete your move. You've got your, your item ready to list, and you found a listing agent you trust to help you complete this process. So if I wanted to sell a bike, I'd have to list it somewhere. So i call up the local listing agent like the local newspaper and ask them if I could sell it in their newspaper. Or I could do it on Facebook through their, uh, their local uh, uh, bid, uh, bid buy and sale, uh, bid, uh, what is it, buy, sell, and trade sites, you know. That's a listing agreement. And by the, by the subscription on Facebook, you gave them minimum listing identifications. Listing, minimum listing um, elements. You gave them an account number. You gave them an address. You gave them a name. You gave them s several items that they need in conjunction. In conjunction, there's that in conjunction, in, in contract form in order to be able to accommodate your requirement on their platform. That's all it is. But again, there's that funny word accommodation. You guys should learn about that accommodation. <clears throat> a, a licensee shall not receive payment of a commission in the absence of a written listing agreement. So now we find out a written listing contract is required in the district for sale of all real property. And the one that's receiving payment, the one selling it, selling the item and receiving payment, has to have a license of a commission. And that payment is considered now a commission. Receive payment of a commission. So it's the commercial payment of a military finance. Okay? This is going to play important here. You're going to find out that the received payment is the administration of the judicial real estate investment. In the absence of a written listing agreement, in the absence of a written listing agreement, the written listing agreement by minimum um, requirements is the license. So when the license, when that nice policy officer pulls you over alongside the road and wants to see your license, they're they're looking for a written listing agreement. You go to the bank to cash a check, and the guy wants to uh, uh, the teller behind the, the on the other side of the counter. He wants to acquisition what you're selling him. He wants to see that ID. He wants to see the written listing agreement so he can acquisition what you're selling. 
so he can give you the payment. You're selling him that check. You're not, that's not a deposit. They can't accept deposits from an American national. You're selling him a check. Investopedia. Listing agreement is a contract under which a property owner, as principal, full acquittance and discharge of principal and interest. You return the interest to the United States, and of course, if you're the principal, then you get the full acquittance as well. Amicus Curie, as friend of the United States. Form AO430 clearly points out that the defendant named in those cases that they, they administrate is actually the creditor and the plaintiff is actually the debtor. Form AO430. Full acquittance and discharge. Interest goes to the United States. Principal is returned back to the listing agreement property owner. Authorizes a real estate broker as agent to find a buyer for the property on the owner's terms. I want to sell it to the public. I go to a public forum. If I want to sell it privately, I don't get an agent. I find a buyer privately. And I do a private exchange. In exchange for this service, the owner pays a commission. The owner pays a commission. So, if I'm paying... A commission. I'm making the administrative payment to a commission. Shall not receive payment of a commission. I'm now the licensee that is making payment to a commission. Does that make sense to anybody? You operate the subrogation by holding that license. And the law tells you that it's subrogated. Pays a commission. Most people who buy or sell a home do so with the help of a licensed real estate agent. These professionals know their local markets have superior negotiating skills. This is going to be important. You might laugh at this later. And generally make the entire buying and selling process easier. In exchange for their expertise, real estate agents earn a commission. So you're making the payment to them or to, to the commission and they earn a part of that commission. Less commonly, the term listing agreement also refers to a contract made between a security issuer, a public company, and the financial exchange that hosts the issue. That license says that you're the host. Somebody has a party at your house. You're the host, right? That license has that address to your house. You are the host. You are the, you are the host using that house as a principal place of residence, a principal place of business, um, a public company, a financial exchange that hosts the issue For the security issuer. Again, you're still the principal. You're the host. And you're hosting the issue to the issuer. So you're still not the issuer. You're just the host. You're the host. You're the principal. But in that license, you convert to the security issuer in that exchange. You are the, you, you are the host presenting the issue. And then once you present the issue and they take it, you are now the issuer. You handed that, that security instrument over to them. You issued it. You are the issuer. You do that yourself. Okay? Who pays real estate fees? Most people who buy or sell a home. Oh, we just did this one. We want to go back here. Examples of exchanges include the New York Stock Exchange, the Tokyo Stock Exchange, the London Stock Exchange.
What is a mail stock? Mail stock is the postal service. What they have to stock in order for all the communications that are being exchanged. Okay. Um, when we look at 26 U.S.C. 6201 assessment authority under tax system, the, the, the assessment authority is coming from yourself. Again, you're making that determination. The taxpayer makes the determination, and the secretary assesses the determination. Okay? And this is what happens when you assess things. This is Black's Law. This is what they use in their Supreme Court cases to ascertain, to as certain. When you look at that documentation, you have to make that make sure that it's certain. The facts in it are certain, as certain, to ascertain, fix the value of. So if it's not certain, you fix the value. If you sign it without ascertaining it properly and affixing the proper value, then you ascertained it as true and correct. Okay? So if they hand you a form and certain terms and conditions on there are not true and correct and you sign them anyway and state that you're a resident when you're not in fact a resident and that is a false claim, they can use that against you. And that is what they are doing. You are not a resident. That resident presence has never been deemed necessary. You never came to a meeting of minds with the Secretary of Commerce and the Secretary of Treasury in making that determination as a necessity, which is a military necessity under the Fifth Amendment, or excuse me, the Article, uh, Article 5 of the Bill of Rights of the Constitution, which guarantees that they can only take property from you for military necessity and they must compensate you for that. They must. It's a military necessity, and that again is under Article 10 of the Libra Code in concurrence with that. Martial law chiefly affects the police and the collection of public revenue and taxes, whether by the expelled government or the invader, for the army, its use and its safety, and the safety of its operations. The safety of its operations, the risk management, the insurance, and the safety of its operations is the insurance for the loss of life, both on their side and those of natural inhabitants that have nothing to do with the war. To fix the amount of the damages of the value of the things to be ascertained, to be ascertained. Again, that's a futures market. Futures mark it. Mark it for the future. I can't mark anything for the future. All I can do is live in the now and know that the now is dependent on all that was in the past and all that is in the future, for there is nothing new under the sun. He made all things that there is, was, and ever will be. It's already, it's already there. All I have to do is observe it right. To impose, imposition, a pecuniary payment, a monetary payment, a valuation upon persons or property persons or property persons or property you have persons in their property under the fourth amendment okay the people is their property and their persons houses papers and effects their houses is of their person their papers are of their person their effects are of their people and their property if you have an effect of persons, then you have an effect of personal property because you're carrying a license and they want to negate the actual property of people and the effects of people in acquiring that property for its use by possession, not for control and entry into a record of persons for its use. 
to ascertain, adjust, and settle the respective shares to be contributed by several persons. Okay. That last name shows a contribution by several persons in the past through genealogy that my dad had a record in that same system and it's recorded. It's recorded in the death record. That birth registration has an, has an intent to be eventually entered into the National Archives as a statistical element Pursuant to entry of a death record, a death numerant, a death numerical identification from the enumeration at birth, not recording the actual event of the man being born and discharged as a man and now capable of taking his, his very own first breath of life. That entry in the birth registration created a probate administration of documentation that says there is no living soul. That the person is in fact a decedent, in other words, deceased. They did not record the first event of our actual lives as living souls in the proper manner. Otherwise, that birth registration would not be evidenced. Birth registration is a military Department of Defense issue. The only birth registrations there should be are those of military servicemen who were on station, on base, with their wives under those particular assignments and that child was born on that base or a foreign similar base as a needful place or building in military construct for those specific, what do they call it in 42, inpatient hospital services. That's the only birth registrations there should be. Saying that mom and dad are both of military descent and have ceded their jurisdiction to the military forum and have properly organized under that military construct first and then able to then perform the commercial activities as part of that military enforcement through martial law, which chiefly affects the police if you're not a police then you should be carrying that badge what is a license credit card placard plate badge stamp yeah it covers everything so that identification of several persons because it relates to persons before you through the use of that last name toward an object beneficial to them all in proportion to the benefit received and settle the respective shares to be contributed by several persons toward an object beneficial to them all. In other words, you're supposed to have the same objective, the same commission, the same mission, commission, with mission. You should be on the same mission. 
a mission of peace, not war. In proportion to the benefit received, peace, not war. In connection with taxation of property, means to make a valuation. See, in 26 U.S.C. 6201, the assessment authority, the tax payer is the one making the determination that he is a tax payer. In making the determination that you have to pay taxes, you've been convinced that you have to have a Social Security account so you can have that card, or that a Social Security account is already made and you have to apply for the card, which is a tax identification number, so that you can then go out and get a job, so you can pay said taxes, and then also so you can get a, a license or state ID so you can get that job and get to and from that job so you can have the driver's license or present an ID to some other official so you can ride a public transportation system to get to and from. If that's the valuation and appraisal of the property that that you consider of your, your own worth, then you go right ahead. But I think you're confusing the property and the person. Notice it said property or person, or person or property. Person, payment upon person or property. So if you're leaving the payment upon the person, then the person is the one getting paid and not you. And then you turn around and use that same person's property, the payment upon that person, the Federal Reserve notes. That's that person's property. You use that same person's property now to pay for property like a couch, and now you call it your property. You can do that if you know the person, the, the 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 capacities and how it operates, and the proof that you need to acquire that. If the commanding officer shall cause receipts to be issued, then the spoliated owner may obtain indemnification, a directive under 50 U.S.C. 4305, full acquittance, of dis full acquittance and discharge, hand all the interest back to the United States. Guess what? Poof go the taxes. Government instrumentalities are not taxable. The interest is what they are taxing at the state level and they're using it in connection with taxation of that property at the state level. That's proof that they're violating the interest of the federal government by instrumenting a federal government statute and code under 48 CFR 52.212-5 contract terms and conditions required to implement statutes or executive items hyphen commercial uh, commercial items and services all done through the identification you that identification is a is a contract it's a listing agreement that's all they have to have Um, listing, uh, usually in connection with listing of property liable to taxation. And that's the liability. Okay, remember UCC 3-402 talks about the authorized representative giving an unambiguous signature on the instrument is therefore not liable for the person named in the instrument. The liability is a tax liability. That's the liability. So the interest in that liability lies in the United States because the state is posing a taxation at the state level saying that they're in concurrence with federal taxation laws. Well, the federal taxation laws are, again, martial law, Article 10, police and the collection of public revenue and taxes, not private, not private property. Persons is public property. You got a license, that's public property. 
You just converted everything to public property and you went out and used that person's public property known as Federal Reserve notes to go out and buy yourself a couch and call it yours. Can't do that unless you had that receipt and receive full acquittance and discharge by handing that interest back over to the United States so that the principal is returned to you. You now own that couch. Clean title. Clean title means there's nothing to see. There's no dirt. So why even look at it? It's going to be a blank sheet of paper. No evidence that it requires a title. Nobody else shows any interest in it. There's no tax, no tax lien on it. You can't identify it in your system. By using that identification, it connects the name with the number, and that number is identifying everything. Enumeration at birth. And implies the exer exercise of discretion on the part of officials charged with duty of assessing. Of assessing what the value is. So if you don't fix the value, they're going to assess it by its already assessed form. It's already assessed and they're just going to whip it right through the system. Yep, okay, it clears. He qualified it himself. But they don't care whether that resident presence has been deemed necessary or not. It all implies the exercise of discretion. <clears throat> and including the listing or inventory of property involved. I spoke about this on my last case um, six years ago when the officer tried to claim that they didn't search the vehicle. All of them sat there on the bench and tried to claim that they did not search the vehicle. They did an inventory. And the problem with that is that the inventory, and I was able to get one of them, the one that was on the force for like 40 years, the senior official, um, admit that they did do an inventory. And that it was a search. And that the inventory and search are different. The inventory is the list. The inventory it can't be had unless you do a search. It can't be had unless you do a search. Now you can put a list down, but it doesn't become inventory unless it's acquired. So you have to search for it. So I can give a list to the guy at the restaurant that I work for that's going to order everything of everything that we need. And that's my list. And it's going to fulfill the inventory that we need as a restaurant to perform functionally as a restaurant. So I can create a list all I want. Whether it gets fulfilled or not is dependent upon the process. And that means it has to ascend up a chain. Unless I'm the one gathering the inventory by making my own list. So when they ask you for that listing uh, contract, they want to fulfill an uh, inventory. They want to do a search. Well, what are you searching for? Well, you know, anything that might harm us. Well, I guarantee you, I ain't got nothing in here that'll harm you. Now, if I pick it up and use it, that might harm you. There's a distinct difference. That pen in the, in the, in the console, it's not going to harm you. It cannot harm you. Just like the person cannot harm you. There's a distinct difference between the person and how it operates and people and how we operate. How we move, how we move, how we motion, how we are motivated. Determination of extent of physical property. Again, that pen and me in conjunction can do many things. The pen can't do anything. And placing of a value thereon. So that pen is worthless 
by itself. The Federal Reserve note is worthless by itself. The person is worthless by itself. It has to be in conjunction with something else. It has to be enumerated so it can be tracked. To adjust or fix the proportion of a tax which each person of several, of several liable to it. Okay, now we find that there are at least two persons, and this is why it has to be several. Contributed by severals and receivable by several, and therefore liable to several. Liable to it. Has to pay to apportion a tax among several. Now, to apportion a tax among several, if I'm not a taxing agent and receiving a tax payment as well, then where is that valuation? Remember what I said earlier about the license and you're a selling agent and as soon as you sell it, now you've converted yourself to a liable party. Okay. Has to pay to apportion a tax among several to distribute taxation in a proportion founded on the proportion of burden and benefit. Okay. Remember I said if you return the interest back to the United States and it's recognized as it is already a derivative of a Department of Defense United States issue then it is in the interest of the United States already. It can't be denied. So you turn the interest back over to the United States because it's a government instrumentality and the state has placed a tax upon it. Government instrumentalities are non-taxable. Seymour versus Peters. To calculate the rate and amount of taxes. So we get involved in a contract and it's of persons. It's going to be considered a taxation. And you have to be able to calculate the tax rate and amount of taxes. If you hand that over to somebody else, you just hand it over everything. And then they're turning around and putting it on you as liability. And you're acquiescing to it. Again, UCC 3-402 tells us if you're the one giving the signature, you're not liable. Feel free to give a signature. You're not liable. But if you're not liable and you don't know how you're not liable and you use that instrument to go out and buy a couch, say you use a check to buy a $1,500 couch setup, really nice, got the push-outs and the remote control built right into it and heating pads and massage, yeah, you get the right, right setup for you. They, they're going to come take it anytime they want. If you can't prove that it, you acquired it and got full equipment and discharge, it's still lying a burden. The tax burden hasn't been released because it hasn't been turned over to the interest of the United States so that it can be protected property of the protected person under international law. If the owner has not fled and the commanding officer has caused receipts to be issued, the spoliated owner may retain, uh, obtain indemnification. May. But if you don't, then indemnification is not had. There's still a battle of the forms floating around out there. Okay? And this is Flanagan. 
versus Police Jury of Jackson Parish. Flanagan versus Police Jury of Jackson Parish. Assess is sometimes used as synonymous with levy. So if you assess the taxes, you are, a, are levying the taxes. If you are the one making the tax determination as the taxpayer, determining that you are a taxpayer, you are making that assessment. And therefore, you are levying that tax yourself, and they are going to assess whether that levy is accurate in its value. Now, again, like we spoke of earlier, they're just going to assess, well, yeah, he said it was $1,500, and that's how much it cost, and that's the set, uh, yeah, that's, that's accurate. Okay, but if they find something out of line and you say you made uh, um, $150,000 last year and then this year you say you only made $15,000, they're going to start assessing things and wanting those receipts. If the commanding officer shall cause receipts to be issued, they may serve the spoliated owner to obtain indemnification. Now, if I got a receipt and the IRS is demanding that receipt, can they do so without permission of the commanding officer that issued it? I ask very serious questions for very serious reasons. Because they, if they are the ones asking for that receipt, do they have the proper authority to require that receipt? In any instance, without the indispensable party for tax purposes, which is the federal government, which means all entities of the government of the United States, including the United States Postal Service as registered agent of the post office, which carries the trademark of the Universal Postal Union and all of its documentations under Her, union, Her Majesty's Union Customs Codes, the Constitution of the Universal Postal Union and several others, under a copyright disclaimer. Lehigh Valley, our company versus State Board of Taxes and Assessment. Sometimes used as synonymous with levy. If it's sometimes used as synonymous with levy, then it is in fact synonymous with levy. And can always be used synonymous with levy. And is sometimes distinguished therefrom. Sometimes distinguished therefrom. The insanity, folks. So just like sometimes used as synonymous, it can sometimes be distinguished therefrom. The assessment of a tax and a levy being the origins of both. Assess as say, my yea be my yea and my nay be my nay. If you look up the, uh, ter the term assess, you will find out it means a say, as say. It's the same thing, synonymous with a say. So it's as I say, as said. It's my valuation. Again, concurring that we're the ones that are supposed to be placing the valuation on there. And if it's not, then it's predetermined and preclassified by what you put down on that form as if, though, yeah, you classified yourself as a resident. Because no one made that necessary determination. It's never been deemed necessary. And the record will show this. Therefore, it can't be necessary. Assessed is equivalent to imposed. Remember we spoke earlier of imposition. Imposed. Where did we see that? To impose. To impose. To imposition. It's not that I've already been impositioned. I imposition myself. 
I dispositioned myself by coming off of the square of not being taxable and saying, I guess I'm taxable. And it was a total guess. Took me a long time to figure out the answer is no, no, I'm not. I'm not taxing myself. I live freely. Uh, let's see. Is equivalent to imposed. Imposed. Assessed. Now we've gone from assessed to assessed. And is equivalent to imposed. Town of Brandon versus Harvey. To value or appraise. We're doing it ourselves, folks. Every last bit of it. The next one, and we're gonna dr we're gonna drum through some of this real quick here now, because I've got a few to go. But I wanted to make a video to show you that the identification in its basic element is the listing agreement, because it's got all the the minimum requirements. It's got the name, address. It's got certain biological factors to match it up with the with the actual living soul as the man who presented the person, the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All in one action. And you don't realize this is what you're doing. You're, you're bastardizing that Trinity. You are the Trinity yourself. Okay, this is Code of Professional Responsibility. And we're looking at DR, uh, um, and this is Black's Fourth. 2-102 Professional Notices, Letterheads, Offices, and Law Lists. And that's what it is. It's a law list. You're listing your agreement to the particular form of law that's being imposed. And that's dependent upon the thing, the property that you're handling. If you got a job at McDonald's, it's the property that you're handling and the insurance contract within. Um, you wouldn't have certain insurance clauses for um, working the friars at McDonald's as you would if you were working as a mechanic at an automotive shop because you wouldn't be dealing with fryers. So your insurance agreements are going to be different. All of these things come into different valuations. And so you, it's uniform throughout the jurisdictions is that you are making your own determinations, folks. And you have to start making a better determination. You have to learn how to... Um, let no tongue prosper against you by learning the different tongues and seeing how it all correlates. So we've gone from a listing agreement, which is a real estate agreement evidently, to a listing agreement is a sale of all real property and includes a listing contract. So it's becoming more and more ambiguous as we go. And now we're seeing that, um, oh, here, let's look at this one. Um, a sayer, a say office, a say. This is when I was looking up listing and we got to a say. As I was saying, it's the same thing as assess. The proof or trial by chemical experiments of purity or fineness of metals. A true assayer of gold, a, tr a gold assayer, a gold assessor, a sayer. One whose business is to make assays of the precious metals. Let's keep going then. Particularly the precious metal of the precious metals, gold and silver. A trial of weights and measures by a standard as by constituted authorities, clerks of markets. Okay. A trial of weights and measures by a standard as by the constituted authorities, clerks of markets. A trial of examination of certain commodities as bread, clothes, etc. See annual assay. Annual assay. Every year you do taxes and you give them your assessment. A say office, the staff of persons by whom or the building or department in which the process of saying gold and silver required by government. Did that sink in? Required by government. Yeah. 
incidental to maintaining the coinage. If you're using commercial paper, you're using a military fiat currency known as, as military orders, military script, and it has nothing to do with actual assessment of gold and silver. None whatsoever. It's all based on personal property, which is the thing at hand through long arm statutes that reach out and acquisition things that you claim is your property without a receipt or an agreement. An international peace treaty. A sayer of the king, an officer of the royal mint, a sayer of the king, IRS is the assessor of the mint. Instead of using the private coin of the realm, gold and silver, they're acting as private debt collectors for military script, an officer of the military agents. So, let's go on to the next one as we were talking about the um, ethics and responsibilities of these attorneys. And I just wanted to read down a law list. Um, an announcement of the fact that the lawyer had resigned and the name of the person to succeed him or take over his work. A lawyer or law firm shall not use professional cards, professional announcement cards. Oops. We, 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 there can, okay, this is it. They did it screwed up here. The smaller print is a continuation from this here. So there can be no justification for the participation and acquiescence by an attorney in the development and publication of an article which on its face plainly amounts to the self-interest and unethical presentation of his achievements and capabilities. That identification that you get, that driver's license, is the same thing. It's posing that you've acquired achievement, achievements and capabilities that you don't even comprehend. If you have a driver's license, folks, you're supposed to have an oath of office. This has very, very clearly been clarified through many videos I've done on the certification of title is false. That certification of a motor vehicle operator's lease to acquire a certificate of title requires that person, in person, to agree that the property that he bought, he handed over as a pledge to the state, and wrote up an agreement that in that exchange, he now took upon a tax and insurance ownership by pledging that property as collateral and wrote up a handwritten statement of his intent to do so because his intent in use of that property that he then pledged to the state in that agreement was for the purpose of of performing at least 50% of its use for the trade or business and trade or, or business being defined as the performance of the functions of public office means that you first have to have an oath of office to then write that statement of intent to then qualify the motor vehicles operators lease that would then qualify the certificate of title that would qualify the original pledging of that property that qualified the purchase of that property through military fiat currency. That's a lot of long, that's a long list of ifs, folks. And like I said, that birth registration says you was born in the military on a milita military installation, inpatient hospital services provided. A 
an announcement of the fact that the lawyer had resigned the name of the person to succeed him. That birth registration as mom and dad intended for that child to succeed him or take over his work in the military would not be objectionable either as an official communication to those employed by or connected with the administrative agency or instrumentality that had employed him or as a news release. But to include therein a statement of the lawyer's experience in and acquaintance with the various departments and agencies of the government and the laudation of his legal ability either generally or in special branch of the law, is not only bad taste, but ethically improper. It's improper for you to have a license unless you know this stuff, folks. Well, let's do it this way. No. Anyway, I'll find it someday again. But there's a minimum listing agreement, a uh, minimum set of elements required for a listing agreement, and they all exist on that driver's license. That's how minimum that list is. It's basically a business card, and that business card says you're you're legally capable of operating all the various different contracts that it's applicable to. And what do they, they ask you for everything? They want to see your identification. Why do they want to see your identification? Because it's a listing agreement. It's a contract that has a name and an address. The name of the principal agent and the address of the one they are agent for. That's a postal service address, folks. That's a street name, and it's known as a street name security, and it's got a number attached to it as its bond number. In each municipality, they have certain zoning districts that they pool up together as investments by their address. All those bond numbers sequentially adding up into one pooled investment, and all of the inhabitants in there, in all of their commercial transactions are pooled together in municipal bondings. Everybody goes into traffic court. Sometimes you see a hundred people in that court and it takes them an hour to run through there. A hundred people. And we'll say a minimum $150 citation. Times a hundred, that's 1500 
times a hundred. It's one and a half million dollar bond pool in one hour. One and a half million bond pool in one hour off of 100 citations running through a court. And that's if you have, uh, if you do roll call, it's going to take you a half hour. And then uh, they just have everybody on that roll call. Uh, they're not going to have 100 people show up. I've been in 50 people show up. Out of those 50 people, maybe one will stand up and object to something. You got 49 people out of 100 on roll call that show up. 50 of them are going to have failure to appears and go out and get picked up and thrown in jail. Unlawfully, of course, because that's not the proper process. The defendant must voluntarily appear in court in order for the court to obtain personal jurisdiction. That is a direct violation, and if everybody learned this, uh, sorry, I, I failed to appear because I'm not required to. It's a voluntary thing. To then issue a warrant for my arrest would be complete violation and cause for kidnapping charges to be placed on the record for your private actions. You had no qualifications to do that. I can prove every last one of them, not only just contempt, but incompetent. These people are to know these facts, and if they don't know these facts, I'll be damned if I'm going to let it go unspoken. That's why I speak this stuff. It's simple, folks. Read personal jurisdiction under LIIOX, and it'll tell you the courts can only obtain, or generally only obtain, typically, typically, excuse me, let's say, let's use their terminology, typically, typically, because it has to be a certain type. And again, like we spoke of earlier, it's personal property or pri pri private property, person or property. And that's a distinguishing element between personal property and private property without saying the, the various differences. It says person or property, and their courts are in rem, the thing. So, so the thing is, most people think is the property. Well, there's a distinction between property and person in that statement because it says person or property. Very specific. The law is specific. So let's get on to the next one. Um, B, a lawyer or law firm. Remember I showed the uh, financial index where it sh showed the change from a last name to a firm name. And again, this is in regards to an investment scheme where they've changed real property for the productive use or investment through the court registry investment system. They have to in order to be able to place it in a pool of bonds to securitize it and then place it on the stock exchanges 26 US code 1031 1031 exchanges in the financial industry associated with the prosecution or defense of a criminal matter shall not from the time of the filing of complaint information or indictment the issuance of an arrest warrant or arrest and until the commencement of the trial or disposition. A lawyer or law firm associated with the prosecution or defense of a criminal matter shall not, from the time of the filing of a complaint, information, or indictment, the issuance of an arrest warrant or arrest until the commencement of the trial or disposition without trial, make or participate in making extrajudicial statement that a reasonable person would expect to be disseminated by means of public communication that relates to character, the thing, in person. They cannot, def they cannot identify the living soul, guys. You're doing that by attaching an identification and using it in a capacity as a living soul as if though you you know what you're doing and you don't if you don't clarify that at each and every instance that every breath I take is an act of God and I'm only giving you this license as a matter to uh, obtain indemnity indemnification because you're gonna give me a receipt to attend another attendance which I'm going to get another receipt and I'm gonna collect them all up all you want but remember I'm the principal and you're the one issuing 
and I'm going to hand all the interest back over to the United States. Because neither one of us wants to be caught in conducting um, trading with an enemy. I'm looking out for you and me. And I'm going to do it right from the start. I'm going to let you know, as a, as a policy officer, you think you have jurisdiction? You better look at your feet and look at that pavement you're standing on. That's known as a postal road. That's not known as a police road. Who do you think you get your powers from? You think you get it from the military? Let me tell you who directs that military on the international platform. It's called the president of the nations of 192 nations that Congress together, walk together every so often in union under the United Nations and impose all that law of nations, that military construct of military, of, of military, of, of military enforcement on the land. You get your powers from the Postal Service. This is why I think it's hilarious when the Postal Service calls a local police officer. Excuse me? Neither one of you are competent. And I can prove it. Competency bears to the knowledge. And the knowledge bears to the use. And if you're using things without the knowledge, you bear the liability. And they will use that liability against you. Regardless of UCC 3-402, wherein it state, succinctly states, the authorized, signet, the authorized representative giving an unambiguous authorized signature on the instrument is therefore not liable for the person named in the instrument. The law is specific just as the language is specific. So what is the liability and where does it reside? It resides in the paperwork, which is contractual and subject to taxation for personal property exchanges, not private property takings. Taking of private property must be for military use, out of necessity, and it must be done with co proper compensation, not in exchange for taxation. Period. So let's get on with the next one. Um, firm, the name under which a lawyer conducts his practice may be a factor in the selection process. So if it's a factor in the selection process of a lawyer, it may also be used in the selection process of a representative in a court um, simply by, because he presented it to you. So yeah, they're going to go ahead and keep pulling you into the, into the court unless you can learn how to back this up. I use UCC 3-108, um, 11 citations, and never appeared in court because I knew I wasn't, wasn't required to. And to this day, they still have not issued a warrant on the, any of those. You would think before they issued a bench warrant for failure to appear for jury duty, they'd have issued a bench warrant on all of those 11 prior cases from seven, eight, nine years ago. Yet they haven't done that. Why? Shows you again the competency of the people placing this stuff on the record. The record itself, as, it, as it's posed today, proves incompetent because I continuously call up every six months to the Treasury Offset Program and ask them, are there any debts, public or private, against this name and number? No. So again, it confirms that the local county court clerk converted the name and number, and it doesn't pose an actual debt. It does not, in fact, pose an actual debt. And they won't post it on the public record. They'll post it in the public files so they can remove it. Okay, the use of a trade name or assumed name could mislead laymen concerning the identity, responsibility, and status of those practicing thereunder. Look at that name on the identification card and tell me if it's in all caps. Tell me if it's got a first, middle, and last. Tell me it's got a first and last. And then tell me if that last name is a national name or if it's a uh, spiritual name. 
Because again, according to the scriptures which I use as my holy writs, it tells us in Isaiah fifty or excuse me, Isaiah forty four verse five, one shall say I am the Lord's. One shall call himself by the name of J Jacob. One shall subscribe by his hand in the surname of Israel. So if there's a surname, then it should be Israel. So what's this last name? Is that in fact a surname? Or is it in fact a last name and thus a prima facie conversion through language? And again, this, like I said, this is going to come important when we talk about insurance or real estate agents and listing contracts and, and, and the terms and conditions that they use. You know, that judge looked at me on that uh, bench one day in that last trial and he looked at me and said, do you comprehend, do you, he said, do you understand English? And I'm the guy that used to walk around when I was a kid with the, with dictionaries in my hand. Of course I know English. And so I looked at him with this, this vehement look on my face and just utter distaste for him and anger and resentment. How dare you ask me a stupid question? like that of course I understand English and I said yes today I'm going to throw it back in their face remember that real estate agent his responsibilities as insurance and his his responsibility to be able to know the real estate terms and conditions that he's involved in and he's going to have to uh, know the language and I'm going to prove them all incompetent, bankers, lawyers, judges, police. I'm going to prove them all incompetent. Watch. Accordingly, a lawyer in private practice should practice only under his own name. The name of a lawyer employing him. A partnership named composed of the name of one or more of the lawyers practicing in a partnership or if permitted by law in the name of a professional legal corporation which should be clearly designated as such in the name of a professional legal corporation that birth registration is the creation of that legal corporation and all the derivatives thereof are assumed, presumed, implied, and applied as legal incorporations. Incorporated into the documents, whether incorporated or not. Whether incorporated or not. Remember that one as well. Okay, so let's talk about the factor. The factor... Under 7 CFR, Department of Agriculture. 7 CFR 868.1, a quantified physical or chemical property identified in official standards, specifications, abstracts, contracts, or other documents whose measurement describes the specific quality of a commodity. Height, hair color, eye color, weight, picture of the face, the surface that matches the surname for surface transportation, interstate identification indexing. It's got your signature on it. You indexed it. Indexing is the enumeration at birth, and you keep signing everything. All those documents, who has the measurements already described, Specify specific quality of a commodity. 7 U.S.C. 136 animal includes man. Genesis 2.7, man became a living soul. You keep describing yourself as, in, as a man. And applying for the birth registrations and the licenses and all this. That's manly things. Keep being a man. That's a duality. When you step into the spirituality of the trilogy, you realize as people, as people, we, as people, operate in the capacity of men for persons. Come out of her. Selling agent, 13. Title 13 of the U.S. Code, 
or excuse me, uh, Code of Federal Regulations, Business Credit and Assistance. Business Credit and Assistance. Selling Agent. The CDC, um, with SBA approval, Small Business Association, shall appoint a selling agent to select underwriters. Underwriters are insurance agents. Negotiate the terms and conditions. That's what a contractor does. Of debentures. Offerings with the underwritings and direct and coordinate debenture sales. 50 USC 4305, a directive for full acquittance and discharge. Okay, because we've gotten involved in negotiations in terms and conditions of contracts where we've offered the underwritings as insurance agents through identifications, giving legal qualifications for posting certain financial military valuations for taxation purposes. And we didn't know a fucking thing about it. We didn't realize we were fucking fools. Now that we know a bit, li little bit more, we know we don't qualify as such underwriters. We can't underwrite the ulter uh, 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 ulterior uh, word of our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. All these other names, sorry, my apologies, I repent. I clearly recognize today the importance of knowing that I am the Lord's and this in rem jurisdiction, the thing that you pose to have jurisdiction over is the property things. And again, I am the Lord, so anything I have in my possession and use is his as well. He created all there is. Give unto Caesar that which belongs to Caesar. Even the gold and silver is mine, says the Lord. So the image on that coin is what belongs to Caesar. Not the gold coin itself. It is in my possession and I will use it. And I will melt it down and use it for anything I want. And therefore, giving unto Caesar what belongs to him. The image that he placed in the coin he can have back and it no longer exists. Just like it didn't exist before it was placed on that coin. Interestingly enough, like I said, uh, 13 U.S. Code at first um, is because I stumbled because it's, it's, it's caught me off guard again that we find out that 13 Code of Federal Regulations is talking about business credit and assistance, whereas Title 13 of the United States Code is related to the Census Bureau. Again, the Bureau of Vital Statistics has an agreement with the Social Security Administration and the Department of Commerce to provide for the statistical data element record keeping throughout the life, the tenancy life of the resident that they presume is now a member of their, their association. Because it's been applied, it's been implied by mom and dad, or mom or dad, doesn't matter. It's been entered into the record. That's all that matters. Now that it's been entered into the record, now it can start a genealogy. Now, if you try to stop that genealogy, again, like I said, it's dependent upon that last name, last name and that genealogy wasn't started with you. It started with your mom and dad or prior to them or prior to them or prior to them. So now you got to let them know that this is about Jacob's Ladder. I'm my own responsibility. And again, the scripture tells us we're supposed to hate our own mother and our own father. For if we don't, we can't love Jesus. So we have to learn about this term of hate. That mother and father is a title. See, when I grow older and matured and became age of, of majority, I became a light kind. I should have been become their neighbor. They're no longer my mother and my father. They're my neighbor. It's a new classification by my own determination. I am the Lord's. I am his child. We are all his children forever. When it comes to this earthly mother and father, we're not supposed to pay tribute to our earthly mother and our earthly father. We're supposed to pay tribute to our heavenly father and our, and our earthly mother. The earthly mother is not our mother in earth. It is the earth itself. His wife. Those are the statistics we're supposed to be dealing with. 
the preservation and conservation of wildlife and fisheries, which is their inherent laws. Again, just like the law of nations protecting the national treasures, that all st stems from the natural people. Title 13 of the United States Code is Census Bureau, and it's regulated by the Department of Commerce. And it's in contract with the Social Security Administration, who assists the Department of Defense assign a Social Security number to a newborn child. Very specific. So now let's talk about the real estate agents and direct sellers. Remember I told you to talk about um, uh, the tax agent and the performance of functions of public office and how these uh, licenses require all these different things and elements. Watch this. This is Title 20 of the Code of Federal Regulations dealing with real estate agents and direct sellers. Direct sellers as employee benefits. So now we're, we're talking about a United States citizen as a state resident, a direct seller as a state resident, an outside salesman, outside of the United States. Okay? Outside of the United States, as an outside salesman, a resident within the state, as a United States citizen. Those 26 USC 1031 exchanges we looked at earlier, that's the outside exchange uh, exchange of real property held for productive use or investment. Okay? You're holding real property and you're using it for productive, it's in use for productive use or investment as special rule for foreign real property. Real property located in the United States and real property located outside of the United States are not property of like kind. So the states are wanting to acquisition that property that's not of like kind for the United States. You have to show that it's, it's, it's property of like kind with the United States because you have an agreement with the United States under peace treaties. That you will accordingly under that peace treaty not use it in sales or, or buy, buying and selling as a trading with the enemy. Well, I'm not qualified for that. I don't know who your enemy is because I'm not in the war. If you can identify who your enemy is here, please do so. Otherwise, I don't recognize enemies. I, I recognize neighbors. And again, I'll speak real briefly on the Second Amendment and these policy officers that are cowards saying that they have to have them guns on their side and these uh, regulators that want to do away with the Second Amendment. Uh, I'm more comfortable with the everyday common law man walking down the street openly carrying a rifle or a weapon or anything because then the dumb fool that thinks he can get away with breaking into my, ho my home um, without a weapon because I don't carry a weapon will certainly be able to take care of him for me without having to wait for a police officer to collect public revenue and taxes. See the insanity of that? Why would I call a police officer for my protection when the martial law chiefly affects uh, the police and the collection of public revenue and taxes? Whether by the expelled government or the invader, for the army, its use, its safety, and the safety of its operations. If I've already got an agreement with the army that allows... Um, or the military that allows uh, the common law man to exercise the Second Amendment under militia to, to openly carry, to help them protect our people without having to have a police force, then I would think they would be in compliant agreement with that. But anyway, back to this, the special rules for foreign real property, the state is treating you as an outside salesman, and therefore the property located outside of the United States is not property of the United States, and therefore they are trying to acquisition it as property for the United States to make it into a general deposit so the United States will compensate them for it. And thus they use a tax scheme through insurance and uh, through insurance underwriting. Okay? So again, it's a United States employment real estate agents, it's an employment contract, okay? Under that employment contract, like I said in uh, the certi certificate of title for motor vehicle is false, I've mentioned this many times, and here we see him using that same term again, trade or business. Trade or business means the performance of the functions of the public office. 
And you, under 20 CFR 422.103, when you click on you there, it tells us that you is an individual who, who uh, um, owes a debt to the United States. Okay? Under here, again, this is under 404.106.9 of 20 CFR, and it says you, coincidentally enough, means any person whose earnings from employment or self-employment are included or excluded under Social Security. So, under that Social Security, um, it's an employment contract. It's a listing contract for employment as a contractor for which you earn a commission from all your buying and selling as a person. Very simple. Read it backwards. And again, I'll post these links, and I know I'm going over them awful quick, but the links are here, and you can read the full links. Like I said, uh, the uh, assayer, um, I'll leave a note on that. I'll leave a note on the uh, character in regards to the responsibility of the uh, attorneys where we find out a lawyer or law firm. That's a, a very important thing right there, firm, terminology, firm. In the name of a professional legal corporation. It's always in the name of a professional legal corporation. That's the construct. That's the difference between the given name, uh, which is known as a given appellation, as opposed to a given name. It's an appellation. Very specific. Language is specific. Law is specific. So then we look at um, perform services after 1982 as a qualified real estate agent, or as a direct seller, as defined in Section 3508 of the Code, you are considered to be engaging in a trade or business. So home buyers, when you buy a home and then you turn around and want to sell it, and you want to sell it directly, you're being treated as a direct seller. And when you employ a real estate agent, you're now involving yourself in an employment contract as a direct seller and have hired a real estate agent to give you directions on how to sell your home for a commission of his own. Okay? Now you have two people involved. Now you have a contract. But it, again, it's constructed in trust. But this is where we're going to prove everybody unqualified. This is where we're going to prove everybody incompetent okay again Isaiah 54 verse 7 let no excuse me verse 17 let no tongue prosper against us none that means we have to be qualified in language we have to know the different languages and how it's rooted okay so let's look at this term qualified trade or business if you perform services after 1982 as a qualified real estate agent or as a direct seller, as de defined in Section 3508 of the Code, you are considered to be engaging in trade or business. That's the consideration you are considered. It's a personal consideration for trade or business, which is the performance of the functions of pub a public office, which is a non-taxing issue. So therefore, it's an insurance issue, which is risk management. Risk management. Okay? Qualified. Again, from 20 CFR 404.1502. This is .1069. This is .1502. Qualified speech language pathologist for speech or language impairments only you know any real estate agents that have a license to practice law an oath of office and a uh, degree in speech pathology anybody these are the prerequisites of a real estate they have to be a federal employee carrying a social security agreement 
which is the basic listing agreement, to then be able to um, obtain an oath of office at, through residency, to gain communication with the presidency, to obliterate the Congress and the Constitution of the United States by ultimately being able to use the uh, Congress of the United Nations and the Constitution of the Universal Postal Union instead of the Fourth Amendment persons, houses, papers, and effects. What is their speech and language based on? What are the impairments? Is it really a speech impairment because I have um, a different comprehension? Or is it a speech impairment that most people imply or presume or assume, which is somebody's um, stuttering or lisping or something like that? See, there's much more qualified reasons for speech impairments. Language impairments. It's known as the seventh grade reading comprehension. That judge again looked at me and asked me if I understood English. And I said, yes. Well, if they really understand English, then do they read? Because I know they can read if they understand English. Because if they read, then they would find out that they're supposed to have qualification as a speech pathologist. So they can understand that as an inside uh, or, or a direct seller, you're an outside salesman conducting trade or business, which is the performance of the functions of public office, and therefore you must have a handwritten statement of your intent to do so at least 50% of the use of the property that you're using for the performance of that functions of public office, and therefore you must be keeping records, and therefore must be a record holder, and therefore being able to hold the liability of any taxation for those performances. Let's look at 9 CFR 205.104, registration of buyer, commission merchant or selling agent, minimum information. This is animals and animal products. And just like I showed you under 13 U.S. Code, it's uh, Bureau, Census Bureau is bound by Title 13 of the United States Code. So it's the Census Bureau. For Title 13 U.S. Code, 13 CFR is better better credit and assistance. And this is because the better, uh, better credit and assistance is part of the uh, Department of Commerce. And that is who regulates the Center, uh, Census Bureau. Okay, so let's look at nine. Oops. Nine CFR is animals and animal products. Minimum information. This is the enumeration at birth. Minimum infor information under animal and animal products. Title IX is not animal and animal products as, as we know as agriculture or commodities. It is in Title IX, animal and animal products. But Title IX U.S. Code is arbitration. Maritime transactions and commerce defined as arbitration. So again, we see a changing of the titles. The enumeration of this title is for animals and animal products, whereas the enumeration of Title IX U.S. Code is arbitration, maritime transactions, and consumer commerce. So under registration of buyer, commission, merchant, or selling agent, minimum information. Wow. That's a long list of information, isn't it, guys? The minimum information necessary on a registration of a buyer, commission merchant, or selling agent is as follows. Buyer, commission merchant, or selling agent, name and address. Farm product or products, C, 205.105 and 205.206, in which registrant is interested. Birth Registration Department of Defense. That's the interest already placed through the minimum birth requirements 
under minimum information for minimum interests for minimum use all based on the capitalization what is 205.106 farm products Oh, well, we get everything from farms, don't we? You bet. Everything that exists comes from farm products of some sort. Logs, that's a farm product. Plastic, that's a farm product. Comes from synthetics and chemicals and stuff come from farm products. Rubber comes from farm products. Comes from a plant, actually, a rubber tree plant. Plastics are synthetic commercial or uh, chemical alternatives. A quantified physical or chemical property identified in official standards, specifications, abstracts, contracts, or other documents whose measurement describes the specific quality of a commodity. Plastics are commodities. If registrant is interested only in such product or products produced or located in a certain county or parish or certain counties or parishes in the same state, the name of each such county or parish. If a registrant is not registered for any specific county or parishes or counties or parishes must be deemed to have registered for all counties and parishes shown on the master list. Master list means the accumulation of data in paper, electronic, or other form described in subsection 2C. To see where? Two five point one. So let's look at it. I don't see 2C. Dead end. Okay, so where's this master list? Is that the inter uh, Interstate Identification Index with the FBI uh, fingerprint list? Is that the employment list? Is that Social Security account list? I don't know. But it poses that you're subject to the state list. In wherein all the counties are registered. So whose name is on top of that identification first? So you have the name of the state. The name of the buyer, mission, and the name and address. That's all that's required. That identification is killing you folks. 39 CFR, United States Postal Service, Postal Service Debt Obligations, Disbursement Postal Money Orders. Disbursement Postal Money Orders. Disbursement Postal Money Order means a money order described in Part 762 issued by the Postal Service to pay one of its own obligations. That identification is that identification got a name and address on there. Is that postal service supposed to be letting you know that that's part of a real estate investment trust? And as a principal, you are due just compensation for its use as part of their commercial operations. Is that why they call the local police on you? It's because they know this stuff. Or is it because they don't, uh, they, they have some kind of language impairment and they don't understand this themselves? I said I will prove every last one of them incompetent. Every last one of them is incompetent for that fact alone. Federal Reserve Bank means Federal Reserve Bank or branch thereof. Or branch thereof. Financial organization means any bank, savings bank, savings and loan association, or similar institution 
who is posting financial records, like a school, a library, a restaurant, all gathering and acquisitioning names and addresses, along with bills enumerated for taxation purposes and insured through these banking operations, or federal or state chartered credit union. Person, remember I said incorporated or incorporated, incorporated or not earlier, Person means an individual or individual, several persons, as we spoke of, or an organization or organizations, whether incorporated or not. So when we see person or persons, singular or plural, we think of 1 U.S.C. 1. Words denoting numbers, gender, and so forth means an individual or individual. Singular means the plural. Plural means the singular. Male means female. Female means male. All of that. It's insanity. Including, which excludes all others, because it mentions no others. And it says all forms of banking institutions. A banking institution is a holder of a financial record. If you're holding financial records, whether it's a minimum listing record or not, you are considered a banking institution, and that banking institution is using a registration of a buyer, commission, merchant, or selling agent, but minimum information of a name and address in the state name, the name of each county or such parish. Presenting bank means a bank or other depositor. Depositor, not the one receiving the deposit, but the one making the deposit. Presenting bank means a bank or depositor of a Federal Reserve Bank, which presents disbursement and postal money orders to and receives credit therefore from a Federal Reserve Bank. Now, if all of the instrumentalities of these uh, national banks are Federal Reserve notes and checks and coupons and bills of exchange and all those things that are listed in uh, um, 18 U.S.C. 8, I remind everybody that that comment in 18 U.S.C. 8 includes a plain writing statement that says stamps and other representatives of value. Going all the way back to the one giving the value in all of these listing agreements is the one that's saying what they're saying. Okay? Okay. You're the one making the deposits, and they're not supposed to be accepting deposits from American nationals. They are only supposed to, be to accept deposits from classifications of persons. And if you're not qualified to operate at that, as that person, in fact, but are operating as though you are qualified, then that record is an error. And if you've been doing so since you were 18 and never qualified, then 100% of that record is not qualified. 100%. 100%. And I'm saying because of that and the fact that 98% of the people that 98% uh, of the people pay income taxes voluntarily. That tells me that 98% of the people are also entering all the other data elements uh, uh, voluntarily everywhere else. And that means that 98% of that record is an error for 100% for of it being in error. Reclamation means the action taken by the Postal Service. Reclamation means the action taken by the Postal Service to obtain refund of the amounts of paid disbursements, postal money orders. If the commanding officer shall cause receipts to be issued, the spoliated owner may obtain indemnification. 
If the Postal Service is the neutral office, independent from the Postal Service, then the post office is the one we're supposed to be dealing with for that reclamation and indemnification. They're the military enforcement. That's where you get the amnesty. International treaties. International communications. International knowledge. International recognition. You keep on dealing with you, you keep on de- wanting to deal with these battles of the forms known as the UCC. UCC, Uniform Commercial Codes, it's actually known as the Battle of Forms, and that includes every form of commercial paper issued for its orders, known as fiat currency, which is military script. Then you better know how it's how it operates. If you don't, you'll never learn how to give directives. Every last one of them has to operate on an organization certificate. This is 12 U.S. Code 614 in order to deal with the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve under the Administrative Office issuing all those Federal Reserve notes so you can freely exchange them through just a common license saying that you're qualified to to exchange the Federal Reserve notes and checks and buy stamps and all that. Listen, folks, stamps and other representatives of value, Federal Reserve notes. So you just exchanged a stamp or a Federal Reserve note, which has zero intrinsic value for a stamp or other representative of value. By purchasing a stamp from the post office, a $1 stamp with a Federal Reserve note, what did you do? What did you really do? What happened in that transaction? Can't you just paste a $1 bill on the, on the front of the envelope? Well, if a $1 bill has zero intrinsic value, can't you just put zero intrinsic value on the front of the envelope? I ask serious questions for serious reasons, folks. Forwarding. Acknowledgement. Let's let's start first out. Organization certificate. Acknowledgement. Forwarding to, filing, and approval by Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System. To therefore extend a permit to do business in a body corporate name, the last name, the name, the first given name with the corporate name that's already established and continued as successive use because your dad quit using it after he deceased, but you're still using it, but you attached a name to it and now you're using a seal, corporate succession, contracts, suits, directors, officers, employees, and bylaws. All commercial constructs of the administrative process, instead of the actual process of the Postal Service Amnesty Agreement under a peace treaty, it says, I'm not going to tax you, and you have no right to tax me. And since the tax issue is over, the only issue left is the insurance, and I'm not going to underwrite anything that that's already perfected. I am an act of God, and you cannot insure acts of God. You already recognize this. This is why insurance companies don't act, don't uh, insure acts of God such as flooding. Unless you're in a certain area. And those certain areas have to have that military survey. In order to acquire um, flood insurance, you have to be in an area that is not a flood zone and suffers from an extraordinary act of God beyond the measures already established. So in other words, here in Waterloo, we had an act of God that caused, that was a uh, 100-year flood. And in that, they came in and did a military survey and extended the flood zone. In that flood zone and that extension, then we had a what they de- determined a 500-year flood. And a lot of those people that were um, rezoned in that flood zone for that 100 year flood there was nothing for the 500 year flood so they had a lot of payouts on a 500 year flood 
because the military assured them that under the flood zones, that if they had a flood, it would be a very extraordinary event above and beyond the 100-year flood. And here it was within a matter of years. So even their insurance can't really fend anything for an act of God. And regardless of their insurance, acts of God will rebuild anyway. So when it comes to the destruction of a mother of mother nature through an act of God, um, life continues. And that's what we're supposed to be as a living soul. We're supposed to be have as living souls, not behave in person. Very distinct. And I hope people get the get the uh, idea of the language impairments that we're talking about. It comes down to the phonemes, the graphemes, and the morphemes in all different forms. So let's go on to the next one. I'm going to finish up here real short. Like I said, I'll post these links. Um, so, we, so we have to have an organizational agreement with the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve and acknowledgement from them. And in that, for its tax purposes, we have to con communicate with the IRS as a organization of some sort and therefore classify the organization for tax purposes. And it's all false. The interest of the United States as a government instrumentality is non-taxable. Government instrumentalities are non-taxable. Certification of eligible households. Households, it's a warehouse holding information, holding financial documentation. And it's under agriculture. Your information farmers. Your farming in formation of contracts. A chant at ease, officers. It's all military supply and demand to make sure that they can provide enough food and necessities for the people. But the people demanding all of these extras. All of the conveniences have caused their own demise. Charters and licensing over, overview. The Office of Comptroller Currencies Licensing Division receives. If you're going to deal with anything in currency, you have to be licensed. And again, that's commercial paper, known as fiat currency. Office of Comptroller of Currency. Currency in the United States is fiat currency, which is military currency, which means it's a military directive, a military order. And by that military order, in order to operate in that system, you have to be licensed. As a licensee, you have to make sure that you're not trading with an enemy. In, trading, in making sure that you're not trading with the enemy, it qualifies for requiring certain information, but it can be private credentials and not another license. By offering up a license, you're saying that you're part of the military charters. Pure and simple in its most basic element, minimum requirements. Minimum information. Buyer, commission, or buyer, commission, merchant, or selling agent, name and address. They just need that name and address. And that name and address, above it, it's going to have a buyer, or commission, merchant, or selling agent name. And the state it's going to tell you the farm products it's in or everything that comes from the state and all interstate and intrastate uh, imports and exports. Because that's the contract you're abiding by then. It's the state contract. And again, it's all birth registration, uh, Department of Defense issue. They're the original issuer. 
and is done under directive of an obligation to the Postal Service. It's obligation, Postal Service debt obligation. Birth registration keeping track of tenants by address. Known as a form of banking institution because they're addressing financial forms. You're putting that address on there. Indemnify it. You're getting receipts. Don't throw them away. If you get a receipt, send it back to the right guy. The neutral office. Remember I said all these courts are, are administrative? Oops, wrong one. Judicial, who are we? The judicial officer. The judicial office department is a neutral, independent forum within the United States Postal Service. The United States Postal Service, and it comprised of the judicial officer, the office of the administrative law judges, and the Postal Service Board of Contract Appeals. You're not the contract officer. I, I'm sorry, I've been I've been giving out all this information that you would think is properly warranted. It wasn't. Um, I had a language impairment. I comprehend better today. I'm not going to say that I, I, I understand it yet, but I comprehend it much better today, and I have to repent for my errors, and please help me remove these mistakes uh, to, to uh, prevent any further cause of detriment, harm, damage, or injury to anybody or anything. That's all I want. I, I didn't mean to be part of this. Knowing what it's doing now, I, I, I can't. I, I can no longer participate. Um, the next one. Real Estate Settlement Procedures Act is Regulation X. X, Y, and Z. Regulation Z has to do with being truthful... Um, ex, uh, regulation Y has to do with the capacity of uh, creditor, and then you have regulation X, which is the settlement of the uh, the uh, actual property itself that was taken into escrow through a mortgage agreement. All leases are licenses, all licenses are leases, um, and it's all done through classification. Under Chapter 55, U.S. Code Chapter 51, and it's done as a demonstration project. Um, the legal society is a scientific process, just like the medical society is a scientific process. They're all sciences. And it's a demonstration project in a military fashion. That Bureau of Vital Statistics. It's a demonstration project in live form. They're using the American citizens, the American peoples, as live demonstration projects. When they kill people like George Floyd and the people act up and, and demonstrate. And they, they have to observe that. And that's, the, that's a demonstration. People are demonstrating. And that's why they call it demonstrations. They're coercing you to do this stuff. Be wiser than that. Tell people they, they want you to get a higher education. Show them you've already got a higher education. Show them you've got the spirituality in you that's going to lay down the law and say no more. No more. Um, let's see what else. Action of the council. Oh. Yeah, here's, here's the one that's going to show you everything. 30, 32 under National Defense, Department of De Defense, Chapter 1, Office of the Secretary of Defense, Secretary, Department of Defense Personnel Security Program. Their insurances and, and taxes and all that, that's all based on securities. Everything's based on securities. Like I said, the stock exchange, they've got to be able to make a profit, da-da-da-da. Um, all their all their yield and all that. This part updates policies and responsibilities for the Department of Defense personnel security program, and that's that minimum um, birth requirement, uh, birth registration requirements under 5 U.S.C. 301. 
Plain Writing Act, and it's an issue of the Department of Defense. All of that is stated in 5 U.S.C. 301. Minimum birth registration requirements, it's an issue of the Department of Defense, and it must be done in plain writing. So, there you go, folks. Um, it's all done through a central filing system, which is the Social Security Administration um, message from Social Security is a receipt that the hospital representative gives to the parent as proof of the uh, as proof that he or she elected to have a Social Security number assigned to his or her child through the enumeration at birth process. It's an election. It's a choice. You don't have to do it. It's a military election to enter your child into the military and train them in military schools. At the age of 14, the male children become volunteers of the National and Community Volunteer Services. And they're still going to school, and that's part of their volunteer is the training and education that they get from that point on, high school. And then they're, when they, when they graduated, and it's all on the pretense that they intend to take advantage of the benefit of the higher education program and Title IV of Social Security Administration. And therefore, they're going to be required to enter into the selective service as a military officer to take advantage of that Social Security Administration's higher education. Show them you don't need that higher education. You've got a higher education already, and you bring it in peace. You don't need to enforce it on somebody else through a military operation for commercial purposes to make them bend and form to, to a commercial construct that is, in fact, killing people worldwide, trafficking them, kidnapping them, making merchandise out of, out of, out of the children of Israel. They're not our children. They're children of Israel. I am the Lord's. One shall say, I am the Lord's. One shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall sub subscribe by his hand in the surname of Israel. Why are, we, why are we imposing anything other than that? Why are we impositioning ourselves in the commercial construct? Memorandum of Understanding. Remember I told you it's a contract between the uh, Department of Commerce, the Census Bureau, and Social Security Administration. This is going to finalize it. I'm going to finish up here and send out the handbook for administrative data projects. It's a demonstration project based on the data that you give to the administration. Okay? As I've been explaining. Memorandum of Agreement between the U.S. Census Bureau and the Social Security Administration, SSA, establishing a joint statistical project concerning linkages of household survey data and SSA program data. Purpose. This agreement sets forth the terms and conditions between the Department of Commerce, U.S. Census Bureau, and SSA, under which SSA program data will be linked to survey respondents' data to support research of mutual benefit for SSA in the Census Bureau. It says nothing about yourself. You're the listing contractor with the listing agreement to do such entry of data for their benefit. And you're the liable party for their benefit without knowing it because you don't know how to assert it. Proposed research telling us again that it is research, like I said, data to support research of mutual benefit. Proposed research. Under this agreement, the Census Bureau and SSA will link survey files to SSA programs data. The link files will be used to, by the agencies to conduct research, to conduct research that will benefit both agencies. It doesn't say it's going to provide benefits for you or anything else. It says to provide, re to conduct research that will benefit both agencies. Attachment 1 provides additional information on the approved research projects, again telling us it's a demonstration project. 
linking SSA and census data combines the completeness and accuracy of SSA program records with the range and scope of survey results. You're giving them the data elements, and that is the survey results. Again, 98% of the people are volunteering the data to that, to that record. 98% of that, that record is, in fact, wrong. 100% of the information is not qualified. Maximizing the strengths and minimizing the limitations associated with each. You're giving them the, their strengths. You're making it limitless for them to, to go ahead and apply this shit to everybody. 98% of their record proves it so far. Linking census survey data and SSA program records also significantly expands research opportunities beyond those provided by either source alone. You're providing the expansion. They can't, like I said, the person can't do a goddamn thing. The car can't do a goddamn thing unless a living soul gets in and turns the key in the ignition or does something. Nothing of this. The gun does not kill people. A living soul has to do that. Census survey information provides detailed background information on demographic income, self-reported health status, and other characteristics of Social Security program participants and non-participants. Who are the non-participants? Show me the list of non-participants. That's what I want to see. Because if I'm on the list of participants, because I've got a, a SS5 application, then that would imply that everybody that got an SS5 is a participant and there are no non-participants. Anyway, let's go on to the next one. Like I said, the Administrative Data Projects Policy Coordination U.S. Census Bureau. It's the administration of the census, which is a military project. And you can see it's 112 pages. Going to talk a lot about it. I'm not going to go through any of this. I'm going to post all these links with this video so you guys can go through and see this stuff and do your research. This is what I do. And this is why I've been screaming so long. Certification is false. You cannot possibly certify this information. You can't qualify this information. You have to be able to make legal determinations. You have to be able to determine the exact qualification of the language that the other person is using in order to qualify that. That qualification has to meet a publication determination. That already takes you out of qualifying things privately. Therefore, the term qualification means that you have to do something publicly to qualify it. You have to speak in certain terms, as certain, uh, as certain. I believe that's already spoken. What is done is what ought be done. There is nothing done, uh, new under the sun. Actions speak louder than words. He commanded and it was done. He spake and it stood fast. And I remain on that standing. That is my pose. I am his. I fear not. For I am the Lord's. He has called me by my name. I am his. And I shall call myself by the name of Jacob. And I shall subscribe by my hand in the surname of Israel. You want anything else? It would be a detriment. Uh, it would be a, de uh, a a dissension of what I truly am as a living soul, and a connection and annex to something that was prior. So anyway, folks, been rambling on for two hours now. I think close to, and um, I hope I got the uh, point across. The, the imposition that we're placed in through the indoctrination of the public education system that is imposed by our own mom and dad because it was imposed upon them and imposed upon their mom and dad is an imposition that we need to come out of. 
we need to learn that when we grow up and we become that age of majority that we have to um, realize certain things and certain powers that we have within ourselves. We have a hard time doing that if our mom and dad don't implicate that in us. And this is that Jose 4 verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because you are not a pre priest unto me. I shall deny you. And, and since you denied me, I must deny your children as, as well. So we have to really stress teaching each other. Like I said earlier, when I became age of majority, I was no longer my mom and dad's son. They were no longer my mo my mother and father um, in that sense at all. Their claim of being my mother and father is a false sense of claim or a false claim of sense of what a true father and uh, mother in my view is. And that's our father in heaven and my mother earth as I observe them, not as somebody else implies them. That's subjective. And we've been subjected to this all our lives. And we've been willingly subjecting it because we want to honor our mother and father. And we want to take on that last name. But in fact, it's a false idol. So I urge everybody again, come out of that and realize that the entire system is derived on that education. And in order to help our younger generations, we have to realize even if they're our quote own children, they're not our children. They're children of Israel. They're being kidnapped. They're being made merchandise of. And in order to bring them out of that, it's just like giving a man a fish. You feed him for a day. It doesn't do him much good. You teach him to fish. You, you, you feed him for a lifetime, and it does him a lot of good. But the ulterior motive is that we extend this beyond what we're achieving now so that our younger generation learns it. This means passing on the knowledge. So that when we teach it to our children, they get the concept strong enough that it's not just the knowledge that's important. It's the ability to pass on that knowledge so it continues on. So we don't end up letting history repeat itself with 98% of the people paying income taxes voluntarily and voluntarily whipping out an idea out of their pocket. Give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. In reality, yeah. God created that plastic. But if you take all of that plastic image, imagery out, then you've still got the plastic. And you can still use the plastic. I guarantee you, I can still use that plas plastic to enter in and out of places, certain places. I just don't flash it to anybody. I flash it to the door handle, jam it in there and open that door handle. I still gained entry. Just not legally and lawfully. So remember, again, very basic, simple concept again. Uh, a license is a grant of authority from another, from one to another to allow one to do that which would otherwise be unlawful. So even with the license, you're doing things that are, that are, you're not supposed to be doing. Clue number one. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I wanted to get that out there. Just that simple identification with the name and address. That's a minimum requirements for a listing contract. They need a place to send it. And what they're going to send is either a product, a service, or an enforcement officer. Pick and choose. I'll post all the links. I'll post my PayPal link. Again, I could certainly help some or use some help in that. Um, I've taken it upon a full-time job, so I'm not going to be around much. Um, like I said, it's been a while since I've done a video. It might be a while before I do another one again. But keep pushing all the information. I'm still going to be around and keeping in contact with people. So keep paying attention and keep passing it forward. In the meantime, God bless. Love you. Have a great day.